I'm at my very favorite place setting in front of my sewing machine and I'm ready to start machine quilting. I'm setting my machine up for machine quilting. I have my ruler foot attached. I have my straight stitch throat plate on. I have my feed dogs lowered. My machine is threaded with my 50 weight two ply cotton thread top and bobbin. I have my rubber glove fingertips on to help me move everything easily. I'm on a straight stitch and I have my needle so that it will stop needle down. I'm ready to start free motion quilting and I wanna review some of the basic skills of free motion quilting. How I secure my starting and ending stitches, how I move the quilt easily to get smooth line and how I get consistent stitch length. I'm gonna use a practice quilt sandwich, so it's a 12 inch square. And I like to use the same fabrics that are in the quilt top so that I have the same fabric in the top, the same batting and the same backing. And this allows me to test everything out, make sure tensions are perfect um, before I go to the actual piece. I'm going to do my practice warming up using the ruler foot. We're not gonna bring the rulers up to it yet. We're just gonna kind of warm up with traditional free motion quilting skills uh, to practice. It's gonna look a little big to you, those of you that have only used a traditional darning foot, but it'll be just great for, for getting used to it to warm up. I want to always bring my bobbin thread to the top of the quilt surface, and I do that by putting the foot down, and then I bring the needle down and back up one time, so it's just connecting with that bobbin thread. I'm going to lift the presser foot up, and I tug on the top thread to kind of force that bobbin thread up. And I'm gonna pull that whole bobbin thread up and I want to hold onto those threads as I start stitching. And to secure my starting and ending stitches, what I like to do is I like to make eight to 10 very small stitches. And the first concept of free motion quilting is moving the quilt. And the slower you move the quilt, the smaller the stitches. So I'm gonna start by just moving the quilt really slow and I'm gonna get those small stitches and then I move things a little faster to get a more average stitch length. I can then go ahead with my little snips and I can clip that thread away. So I have made about eight to 10 very little stitches within about a quarter inch area and these small stitches will secure your thread so they won't come loose. You're gonna do that at the very end also. The first part of free motion quilting is once your feed dogs are lowered, you're moving the quilt to create the stitches. The slower you move the quilt, the smaller the stitches, the faster you move the quilt, the bigger the stitches. We want to get used to moving the quilt at a smooth, even rate to create consistent stitch length. The second part of free motion quilting is sewing speed. That's how fast the needle's moving up and down. And we can sew really fast on these modern machines and we don't want to do that. We don't want to sew this fast. It's too hard to move the quilt fast enough to keep up with that. We also don't want to sew really super slow because it's a little awkward. We usually sew between maybe three quarter speed and half speed. And what determines that is how fast or slow you're moving the quilt. How fast I'm sewing depends on how fast or slow I can move the quilt. If I'm kind of just playing around like we're doing now, I'm moving the quilt fairly quickly I can sew fairly quickly. If I am following a line maybe that's marked on the quilt or I have a ruler up to the edge of my ruler foot, I have to move the quilt slower to have more control. I'm going to sew slower. The first basic rule that I always follow in free motion quilting is match sewing speed to the movement of the quilt. If you're getting really little stitches, you're sewing too fast, you need to slow your sp sewing speed down. And if you're getting really big stitches, you need to sew a little faster. And this skill will come in really handy when we are using rulers. The second thing that is equally important is to never move your fingers off of the quilt while you're sewing. Always keep your fingers on the quilt while you're sewing. The quilt doesn't know what to do if you lift your hands off of it while you're still sewing. 
stop sewing, needle goes down, and then you're gonna move your fingers to a better position. This is extremely important with rulers, that we never want to be sewing and moving the ruler at the same time or moving our fingers to a different position while we're still sewing. Train yourself to position your hands, move the quilt until your fingers are too far away from the foot, move your fingers to a better position and start sewing again. When you feel like you are warmed up, end with those small stitches, those eight to 10 small stitches. At this side, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clip the top thread and then I just lift the back up and I clip the back thread. We always wanna secure the starting and ending stitches and we also wanna remember our basic skills for free motion quilting. And now it's time to use a ruler.